Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and today we are going to be talking about some shred guitar. Now, if you didn't know, if you didn't pay any attention in that intro, shred guitar is an area that I have some expertise in. I used to consider myself quite the shredder. Growing up, it was my passion. Guitar players like uh, Paul Gilbert and John Petrucci were huge influences on me, and it was my driving force. If you want to go out and listen to my music that's available publicly, you'd be looking to the band Hellcat Molly. And of course, that is lots of shred guitar. It's plenty of shred guitar on the album, for example. Now my chops aren't what they once were. I have changed and I've developed a lot as a player. I've developed new interests and I found new ways in order to make a living in music. So my shred ability has kind of fallen by the wayside, which makes this quite a strange video to do because today I am going to show you what I believe to be the best shred guitar on the market today, especially for the price because I have just taken delivery of, well actually I've had it for a while now, an incredible Ormsby RC1. Now this is a rusty Cooley signature model. Let me switch cameras and we will go and take a look at it. And here she is, the RC1 in purple flame finish. An absolutely stunning instrument with some incredible design features and modern conveniences that really do elevate this, in my opinion, to be one of, if not the best shred guitar that you can get your hands on today. So what is it that I love so much about this guitar? Why do I think this is so cool? Well, first of all, uh, the thing that impresses me in terms of design is the fanned frets or the multi-scale. You can see that these frets aren't straight. Now I know that won't be a new feature to many of you. You will have seen multi-scale guitars and you're often told that this is for ergonomics. But what you won't think about is that when you look at multiple different uh, manufacturers, none of them can decide where the straight fret would fit on the guitar. Now, of course, if fanned frets were primarily for ergonomics, everybody would agree that you would put your straight fret here or here or wherever it happened to be so your, your ergonomics were consistent from model to model. But none of them can agree on that. And I always thought it was very interesting that the higher you go on a fanned fret guitar, the harder these frets become to play because they angle away from you. Well, this guitar features a straight fret that's technically at the bridge. So of course, this is a multi-scale guitar with a Floyd Rose on it, which is really, really cool when thinking about it. So the scale difference is nowhere near as dramatic as you might see on a traditional six or seven string multi-scale guitar, but I really don't think it needs it. This is running from 25.5 inches on the bottom, sorry, on the top, to 26.15 on the bottom. This is the six string model, of course. This is available as a seven string. Seven string has a slightly longer scale on the bottom. And for me, that's all this instrument really needs. I'm not detuning and therefore that level of tension difference isn't really uh, necessary. I don't need a greater deal of tension difference. So I think that's an absolutely fabulous bit of design from Perry and the guys over at Ormsby. Uh, absolutely stunning. Of course, beautiful headstock. <laughs> Love the headstock. Now when we spin it over, you're going to see, of course, neck through design. Stunning. And this, this cutaway here is absolutely ridiculous. I cannot express how insane this cutaway is. In fact, if you look at the guitar, you can see this is fret 24. So we actually have 27 frets on this instrument. And one thing that you will see when we look at some other guitars is the, the cutaways on guitars are often designed in order to help you get maximum access to the top frets. And even on the best designed guitars, sometimes it can be tricky to get up to that 24th fret. Well, here I'm sat on that 24th fret, and you can see there is nothing touching my hand anywhere near anywhere my hand might touch. This is incredible design. That's for the 24th fret. I can get there on my index finger. I can get up to the 27th fret on my index finger and still I'm not coming close to making any contact with the guitar. It's an incredible piece of design there where the body of the guitar is going to get in your way in no way, shape or form. So absolutely wonderful. Hats off to you, Perry, on that one. So beautiful looking guitar, of course. It's a mahogany body with a flame maple veneer on there, a 45 mil body, set neck. Uh, yeah, very, very nice guitar. Uh, in terms of the neck design, I would say that it falls kind of in line with what you might expect from an old Ibanez neck. In terms of my familiarity with necks, uh, it feels, you know, familiar. It's not really what, of course, what I play now. I'm mainly playing a Strat now. 
But of course, for shred guitar, a nice flat back on the back of the neck is absolutely the sort of thing that you want to be using. So absolutely wonderful. Uh, of course, Foydro's tremolo stays in tune wonderfully. Now, the thing I really like about this guitar actually is it comes with these strap locks that are recessed into the body. So of course, switching between straps through multiple guitars will be a pain unless all of your guitars have this, but as a design convenience, absolutely wonderful. Jack socket is back here, hidden away in the side there, actually recessed away in there, which is a, again, a lovely little design feature. We have a three-way pickup selector, EMG pickups, and a kill switch. Let's take a quick listen to how it sounds. So it's worth pointing out, when I came to make this video, I didn't want to play the guitar in it. I'm not a shred guitar player anymore in any way, shape or form. You should not be impressed by my guitar playing. My guitar playing shouldn't sell you a shred guitar, but my experience of what it's like to learn and focus on shred guitar should be of interest to you. Anybody can play shred guitar on any instrument. Let's not pretend that that's not the case. I have played many guitars in my time and when I was growing up, I certainly didn't have access to the greatest of instruments, but I did my best with what I had. So when it comes to buying a musical instrument that suits your needs, it's not about saying I need to buy this thing because I won't be able to do what I want to do on something else, but we want to make our job as easy as possible. And I can confidently say that if I had access to this guitar when I was a teenager, I would probably be a very different player to where I am now. So let's take a look at a couple of other guitars that I have that might be considered modern shred guitars just to see how they compare in terms of features and so you can see why I think that Ormsby just has the edge on this. So first up is my old faithful, my Vigier Excalibur Ruby Weapon. Here she is. Now don't get me wrong, I absolutely love this guitar. She will always be my number one and she's my number one because she's been with me longer than any other instrument. She has been with me since I started my business in music. She has been everywhere around the world with me. She has met famous guitar players. She has been recorded. She's been played everywhere. Uh, I love this instrument. But compared to the Ormsby, it's a very different kettle of fish. Very different kettle of fish. We were talking about the upper fret access. On this guitar, if I want to get to that 24th fret, I can get there, sure, with my third finger. Index finger is going to be a little bit tricky, but because of the square heel on the back, there's a lot of contact with wood, and it's not somewhere that you really realistically want to be playing. Uh, of course, this is a fixed bridge, so it's not the fairest comparison. Feature in uh, Seymour Duncan pickups. Yeah, it's a lovely guitar. I love this guitar to bits. But you have to work to play it, and that seems like a crazy thing to say to me because I've always said that this guitar plays itself. It very much does, but since having access to this Rusty Cooley Ormsby, I really actually get an, a, an understanding of what it's like to have an instrument that basically plays itself. Of course, Vigier also offered the Sean Lane model, which is a wonderful shred guitar featuring a flat radius on the fretboard. I'm not going to say that that helps you play faster, but it's a very different experience playing with a flat fretboard. The Rusty Cooley doesn't quite have a flat fingerboard. Um, it, like, as I said, it doesn't make you play any faster, but there's a degree of consistency when it comes to things like bends on a flat fretboard. So while that's absolutely a nice appointment. The Rusty Cooley absolutely has this one beat in terms of mod cons. Beautiful. Let's move on and take a look at one of my Mayonnaise guitars. So this is my Mayonnaise Duvel. This is a stunning guitar. I just had its first recording session this week actually because I wanted a guitar that had that kind of traditional tremolo sound. Uh, two humbuckers in here and again comparing this to the Ormsby it's a different kettle of fish getting up to that 24th fret it's a little bit more difficult. We have a much better heel cutaway on this guitar of course. 
uh, but it doesn't match that Ormsby in any way, shape, or form. This feels like a very kind of uh, vintage guitar is the best way to describe it. It feels like the traditional Super Strat in that it is a traditional Strat type guitar that has been modified uh, but still rem remains within that kind of classic vibe. Uh, I sometimes even liken guitars like this to uh, SGs because it's a solid lump of uh, mahogany. Uh, mahogany uh, all over and yeah uh, i'm pretty sure it's mahogany um wonderful uh instrument quite heavy actually to be fair beautiful instrument but in terms of mod cons it's it's a different beast now of course i'm not saying that you can't shred on an instrument like this you can absolutely shred on an instrument like this it's just not making it as easy for you as something like that ormsby with wood stunning instrument so ultimately, I just can't see anything topping this, especially for the money that you can pick one of these up for. If you head on over to Ormsby's website, I think these go for about two and a half thousand Australian dollars, which is, uh, to be fair, is more expensive than some of the other Ormsby models available. Uh, but this, of course, is a very different beast compared to some of their other instruments. Uh, I'm not going to say for any... Um, from any perspective that it's a perfect instrument for my needs of course it's much more modern than i'm playing nowadays the emg pickups aren't traditionally what i would go for in terms of sound and of course because it has 27 frets this neck pickup is shifted so far back that that gap between the pickups is so small now that i find that when i'm palm muting and picking on this i'm really over the neck pickup rather than in that gap so you kind of need your neck pickup just a little bit lower than maybe the guitar comes uh, with. But yeah, an absolutely stunning instrument. Uh, I can't believe I forgot to mention that it's scalloped on the upper parts of the frets. A very kind of Steve vibe, but this really goes from fret 12. Very, very cool. So incredible instrument. Uh, does all of the work for you. Just a, a wonderful, wonderful instrument to play. But don't listen to me. That ultimately, that's what I'm going to say, guys. I'm not being paid to make this for you. I think it's a cool guitar and I wanted to share that with you. I'm not trying to sell you this instrument. I can't play this instrument the way that anybody uh, watching this video would want to play this instrument. Go and check out guys that are using this. There are so many guys out there currently with incredible technique, not just Rusty Cooley, of course. Uh, and they are starting to come over to this guitar because it's, it's absolutely beautiful. It does the part. It looks the part. Sounds the part. And it makes your life a lot easier. Hopefully you have enjoyed that. Lastly, I just want to say a huge thank you to my wonderful supporters over on Patreon. If you want to be like these awesome guys and support the channel, you can do so for as little as $1. Link in the description. You can also head on over to uh, Amazon and check out one of my books. Of course, there's no shred content there. I'm not a shredder anymore. I'm so sorry, guys. I, uh, I'll hide my shame. I'm embarrassed. I'll, I'll hide my shame and show you something much cooler. Of course, I'd be very interested to know what your thoughts are on guitars like this and what other options are available currently on the market for the aspiring shredders. I'm sure there are some things out there that I'm absolutely not aware of, but this, I'd be very surprised if anything tops this in terms of the things that it's offering. Fantastic. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you for another video soon. Laters.